Hello and welcome to yet another video of Cornerstones of Math. The main topic of today's video is representative values. That is, some values that we use in statistics to represent a given data set. And perhaps three most common examples of such values are mean, median, and mode, which students may learn during their pre-college courses. Consider a data set with values 1, 2, 2, 4, 6, 7, 7, 7, and 9. As for the mean, there are many kinds of means, but in this video, I will only talk about arithmetic mean, which is the sum of all values of a data set divided by the number of values. For example, for the given data set, we have total 9 values, so we add up those 9 values and divide by 9, which gives the arithmetic mean of 5. Next, the median is the middle value separating the greater half from the lesser half of a data set. For our example of 9 values, if we arrange them in an increasing order, you can easily notice that 6 is right in the middle, hence the median is 6. Next, the mode is the most frequent value in a data set, that is, the value that appears most often in a data set. For our sample data set, the most frequently appearing value is 7, appearing 3 times in total. Therefore, the mode is 7. Now this can be all easily understood and many of you are already familiar with the concepts, but in this video, I am going to address these values from a slightly different perspective. Namely, I will start by attempting to minimize some functions. Consider n real number values, x1, x2, x3, so on, and xn. Without loss of generality, we can assume that x1 is the least among them and xn is the greatest among them. Next, consider a function defined on the set of real numbers, fx as x minus x1 square plus x minus x2 square plus so on plus x minus xn square. In this function, x1, x2, x3, so on, xn are all constants. They have fixed values and only x with no subscript is a variable. Only x can have changing values. Then the main problem we will address is this. Can we minimize this function? What is the value of x that minimizes function fx? Well, the given function fx is actually quite simple. It is the quadratic function, which is quite easy to handle. First, we expand all of the squares, which gives x squared minus 2x1x plus x1 squared plus x squared minus 2x2x plus x2 squared, and so on, until x squared minus 2xnx plus xn squared. Next, we have to simplify this into ax squared plus bx plus c form. So first, the x squared terms. There are total n x squared terms, so we have n x squared. Next, the x terms. We have minus 2x1x, minus 2x2x, and so on, and minus 2xnx, so we have minus 2 x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn x and the remaining constant terms which are x1 squared plus x2 squared plus so on plus xn squared. This is the quadratic function with a positive leading coefficient n. And you may all know that the quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c with positive a has the minimum value at x equals minus b over 2a. Therefore, the quadratic function fx has minimum value at x equals 2x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by 2n, which is the arithmetic mean of given n values. Let's ponder on this result for a moment. So this function has a minimum value at the arithmetic mean. Here, each term of fx can be thought of as a square of the distances between x and each value x1, x2, so on, xn on a real number line. 
Therefore, we can say that x equals arithmetic mean minimizes the sum of squares of distances slash deviations from x to n given values. Moreover, we can think of the average of these square distances, which can be obtained by dividing the sum of square distances by n. This is the arithmetic mean of the square distances, which is also minimum when x equals arithmetic mean. Therefore, x equals mean also minimizes the mean value of the square distances slash deviations from x. And that minimum mean value of square deviations is the variance sigma squared, where sigma is the standard deviation which some of you may have learned in statistics lessons. We can also prove this algebraically, but I will just leave that to you and move on. Now let's move on to the next part and take a look at another function. This time, consider the function gx defined as absolute value of x minus x1 plus absolute value of x minus x2 plus so on, up to the absolute value of x minus xn. And we try to answer the same question. At what value of x does this function become the minimum? Here, the function itself is slightly more difficult to handle because of all these absolute value notations, but we can still get a good grasp of how the graph of this function might look like by considering simpler cases first. For example, let us consider the simplest case. There is only one absolute value, and this number is 1. Let us think about the graph of y equals absolute value of x minus 1. You may already know how to remove absolute value signs and draw the graph of this function. We must divide cases into x less than 1 and x greater than or equal to 1. When x is less than 1, this x minus 1 is negative, so we must write minus x minus 1 when we remove the absolute value signs. When x is greater than or equal to 1, then x minus 1 is positive or 0, so we can simply write x minus 1. So in the end, we obtain this graph, which is already quite familiar to us. Next, let's move on to a slightly more complicated one. y equals absolute value of x minus 1 plus absolute value of x minus 2. So now we have two absolute values. But many of you might already know that for this kind of expressions, we have to divide into three cases, x is less than 1, x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2, and x is greater than or equal to 2. When x is less than 1, both x minus 1 and x minus 2 are negative, so they both accompany minus signs when removing the absolute values. When x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2, then x minus 1 is positive, but x minus 2 is still negative, so the minus sign only appears in front of x minus 2. This leads to simply 1, that is, the horizontal constant function. And when x is greater than 2, then both are positive, so we have x minus 1 plus x minus 2. Therefore, we now have this graph. And the slopes at each region are minus 2 here, 0 here, and 2 here. And perhaps you can already see where this is going, so let's speed up a bit. For y equals absolute value of x minus 1 plus absolute value of x minus 2 plus absolute value of x minus 3, we have this graph with four different slopes. And for y equals absolute value of x minus 1 plus absolute value of x minus 2 plus absolute value of x minus 3 plus absolute value of x minus 4, we have this graph with five different slopes and horizontal section in the middle. So, can you notice the pattern here? I think you have noticed the pattern here, so let's quickly move on. Based on the observation so far, we can now make an educated guess as to how the graph of gx would look like. We must divide the cases into when n is odd and when n is even. First, when n is odd, then we have this tendency of increase or decrease for gx. Here, the indicator for whether the function is increasing or decreasing is the slope, Hence, I have only identified slopes in each region. Now, these notations in the middle section seem a bit confusing, but you can still understand that this is essentially the function that first decreases, then increases, having minimum value right here at the middle, which is x equals x with subscript n plus 1 divided by 2. 
Here, this x sub n plus 1 over 2 is also the median of the given n numbers when n is odd. That is, if we arrange the values in an increasing order, this x sub n plus 1 over 2 is located right in the middle, leaving equal number of values on the left and on the right. Therefore, gx is minimum if x equals median and vice versa. And now the case when n is even. Here the difference is that the graph now decreases, then has a horizontal section over the middle interval, and then increases. Therefore, now gx is minimum on a certain interval, which is the middle interval in the case division. And here's one more thing. For a set of even number of values, the median is commonly defined as the arithmetic mean of the two middle values. That is, in this case, the median is x sub n over 2 plus x sub n over 2 plus 1 divided by 2. This value is always located in the middle section, the horizontal section of the graph. Here, the relation between the median and the function having minimum value is slightly different from the previous case. It is still true that if x has a value of the median, then gx has a minimum value, but the other way is not always true. If gx is minimum, that doesn't necessarily mean that x has a median value, because any real numbers in this interval also gives the minimum value. And let's address a few more things before I wrap up this part. First, it should be now obvious that x as a median minimizes the sum of actual distances or magnitudes of deviations from x to n given values. But this raises another question. Can we also define some kind of deviation using the minimum value of gx? Like variance and standard deviation from the previous case with fx. Well, we can, and such parameter would look like this. The minimum value of gx, where x is substituted with median, divided by n, so that this value represents the mean value of absolute deviations. This one has a fitting but lengthy name of the mean absolute deviation around median, and it is one of the measures of dispersion that tells you how far the values are apart from the median. So we have also investigated the function with absolute values and its relation to the median, but there's still one more representative value left, the mod, which is the most frequently occurring value in the given data set. And this naturally invokes the following question. When n values x1, x2, x3, dot 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 xn are given as a data set, can we come up with an example of function hx? which becomes minimum if x has the value of the mod. Well, I will not waste your time and give you the example right away. First, define discrete metric or discrete distance between x and y as follows. If x and y are different, then the value of dx, y equals 1. And if x and y are the same, then the value of dx, y equals 0. And using this discrete metric, define function hx as dx, x1 plus dx, x2 plus so on plus dx, xn. Then it is clear that hx is minimum when x equals mod, because that is the case where 0 appears the most and 1 appears the least among these n terms. It is also easily understood from the definition of hx that x equals mod is the value that minimizes the sum of discrete distances from x to n given values. And I guess that's all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. And as always, I will see you in another video.